this is um, this is all the things you need. The, the actual phrasing of this question is a little more um, it's a little more wordy. But the lovely thing about it is, with some practice, we can wrap our heads around, uh, rough enough around this notation that this tells you everything you need to know. Okay. What we have is acceleration as a function of displacement, like that. This is no longer, you might remember, um, yesterday we were looking at that weight on the spring, right? And it was going up and down, and we did a simple model of it. We, we imagined the spherical cow, as it were, with it not dampening at all, and just going up and down and up and down. So we could take advantage, as we answered that question, we could take advantage of all the features of a simple harmonic motion. That was kind of nice. You're not in Kansas anymore, okay? You can't do any simple harmonic motion stuff with this. It's not at all that. You've got some initial conditions. And what we're asking for is two things. Number one, can we get v squared as a function of displacement? Can we get displacement as a function of time? And then on the basis of that, can we briefly describe the motion? Okay. So there's the setup. How are we going to begin? Yesterday, I want you to remember, can you quote it for me? There were, well, actually, you know what? Let's do all of them. Let's do all of them. There are five different ways that we know to write Acceleration. That's the first one. Oh, Second, third. Yeah. I can say acceleration by definition is the change in velocity over time. Okay, so that's a good one. But of course, because v itself is a derivative, this makes this the second derivative of displacement with respect to time. With respect to time. Okay, and then we got these last two yesterday. We had to do some. Um, some algebraic and some calculus backflips. We did chain rule a couple of times. The first one was acceleration, not in terms of displacement, but acceleration in terms of velocity. Do you remember that one? What was it? It started with v dv on dx. Now, we're not going to use that one in this particular example, but we are going to use the next one, which was a few steps underneath. We got to... d on dx times half v. Okay, yeah, so you could write this a couple of different ways. I tend to write this half v squared up here. It, it, it really legitimately does not matter. Um, and my dx there, but you could write d on dx of half v squared. Okay, now we're going to use this one. Uh, it's kind of a giveaway that we're going to use this for two reasons. Two reasons. Number one, have a look at the way question A is phrased. They want a v squared. So look, you use the one with v squared in it. Okay? There's another clue. What's the other clue that tells you that's the one to use? Acceleration. Acceleration is a function of displacement. Right? When you have a look at each of these expressions, this is in terms of velocity, and this is in terms of displacement. You see what's going on? Okay. So I don't really have any way to access this because I don't have any v's to integrate with respect to all those kinds of things. Okay. So you will encounter questions where you'll see x double dot, and there will be v's in that equation. And that's your signal that you should use this one, but we're not there yet. Okay. So if that's the form of acceleration we're going to use, let's just use that as a substitution right up top. Up top. Part A, uh, x double dot, instead of that, I'm going to write this derivative. Okay, so I can quote that. Excellent. What do I do with this? Okay, so I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to x. That's going to give me half v squared on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, so there's x cubed, that's just the primitive, and a constant comes along for the right. However, because I'm about to double this thing and get to v squared rather than half v squared, I'm just going to, for the sake of convenience, call this a half c. Right? And c is a real number, some constant hanging out there. Okay? Multiply through. I've got an expression for v squared, but I have a constant hanging around there. What do I do to get rid of this constant? You substitute the very good. I have conditions, right? Um, they happen to be initially, so I'm going to go these two here. These two are happening at the same time, so I can substitute them in here, right? So I can say when x equals 1, v equals negative root 2. Um, what? So what does this next line look like? This is going to be 2 times 1. I'll just write that in brackets so it doesn't look like 2.1. Plus my constant equals. Two. two. So c is equal to? Zero. Okay, that's kind of convenient. So I've got v squared equals 2x cubed. Excellent. Looks good. So, I now have answered part A. That's good. That's progress. But now I have to get to 
this expression over here. Okay, now I want you to pause for a moment. Last time we didn't worry, remember with the spring, we didn't worry about time at all, really. We never had to bring it in, okay? But here they're specifically asking you to get back to a function of time, okay? Now how are you going to do this? What kind of time information do you have given to you in the question? You have, you have this single word initially, right, which tells you t equals zero, yes? Okay. So in order to use that, I've got to somehow like sort of muck about with this and manipulate it such that I get T's in there. Where are the T's? Yeah, and again, you want to make a decision? DX on you, You're saying, are you saying, which one, which, which one are you saying? This, this one here? This one here, okay. So I want to bring a T in, right? A DT is a good way to do it. But in order to use this, I have to have my acceleration function, right? So. I could say that's equal to dv on dt, but this is no use. This is not with respect to time, right? So this is not going to be useful to me. Okay. So I, you talking about this one? Yeah. This one here. Okay. So I could say that, but it's still with respect to time, and that's not with respect to time. Okay. So I'm kind of still out in the wash, right? Let me give you a bit of a tip. Let me give you a bit of a tip. We're currently considering going back to acceleration, right? We want to get to displacement. From acceleration to displacement. How many steps are there between them? There's two, right? There's displacement, velocity, acceleration. Now, we don't have a velocity function yet, but I almost do, right? So doesn't it make more sense? Like, this is closer to a displacement function than this is in any way, right? I've already done some integration here. So this is going to be my launching point, okay? 